Hey guys, today we are coloring a page from this book. And do you remember these little beauties? These are the Derwent watercolor pencils that I picked up quite a few weeks ago. And it's definitely taken a little bit longer than I intended to get to these, but I found the perfect page that we can try these out with and do a little bit of experimentation. So let's get started. All right, so I found the perfect page that I think goes with this beautiful pink color and this beautiful blue color. And that page is this one. I found flamingos and water, how perfect. And in full disclosure, I've never used these before. I'm not overly familiar or skilled or anything with watercolor pencils. I've used them, but in terms of like any good at them. I mean, you know, I'm okay. I thought it would be really fun to experiment with these. So I have a watercolor brush, I have some water, and this is not watercolor paper. So I'm a little bit nervous about how it's going to kind of absorb some of the water. So I'm actually going to be very light handed with the water, just so that I don't ruin this book. And certainly the pages kind of underneath it. Not that I'm dying to color this page, but you know, it is what it is but I'm gonna be careful nonetheless. All right, so before I do anything, I actually wanna do some tests on watercolor paper. And this is just Canson, you know, cold press watercolor paper. And this is just going to allow us to sort of see what these pencils do uh, before actually putting them down into our book. Now it's not gonna be exact because this is proper watercolor paper and that is not. So, it's just gonna sort of be a good test environment. We'll kind of see what these things can do and then we'll sort of try to adapt it for our book. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of a swatch down. Man, that's a nice color. And I'm just gonna push a little bit harder up here at the top and then just gradually kind of lighten my pressure there. Then I'm just gonna dip my paintbrush in water here. I'm going to kind of use the edge or the rim to get it a little bit dry. And then I'm just gonna dab it off onto a paper towel just so that it's not wet. Cause I'm not gonna be able to use a bunch of water in my coloring book because it's not watercolor paper. It won't hold all of that water. It'll kind of start to buckle. So I really, really need to sort of see what we can do with very little water here. And now with watercolor pencils, you wanna kind of start from like your lightest spot and just sort of work your way up towards where you used a little bit more pressure. That is very pretty. Very pretty. That is the perfect flamingo pink. I love it. All right, let's see what we can do with our blue. This one I feel like is not as smooth as the pink. Even just kind of laying it down, it just felt a little bit more chalky or a little bit more dry. But that's all right, we can adapt. This is a very, very pretty color. Now I am, you know, obviously gonna have to use some other colors. So I'm also just kind of curious, like, you know, what is this gonna look like if I maybe like for example, if I use this pink and then I take another pink and I'm just using this as an example, I'm just gonna take this clay rose and this is just a regular Prismacolor. This is not a watercolor pencil. I just kind of want to see what it will do and see if these are blendable at all. Because if not, I might have to kind of rethink how I'm going to, you know, complete this piece. So I'm going to do the same thing and just kind of work lightest to darkest. And you can see it's not really picking up this, this Prisma color. It's not doing anything there. It isn't horrible 
it's definitely blending adjacent to it, but it isn't doing anything for this color. And I think that's actually okay. I was just making sure that it wasn't going to ruin that. And it certainly doesn't. It just doesn't really want to work with it. So I wonder if we can just sort of kind of marry these two up against one another. And I'm just using another, this is just a Crayola, just to kind of see if it'll fill in. This is, again, this is watercolor paper, so it's very textured and, you know, the Prismacolor isn't laying down overly smoothly. Oh, well, that's funny. The Crayola is actually sort of changing or activating, for lack of a better word, way more than the Prismacolor is. I actually really kind of like this. <laughs> Maybe this is our Flamingo color palette right here. All right, well, we've done our little experiment. Let's, uh, let's go into our book and see if it will react well to water. I don't know that it will. I am a little bit worried. Um, we'll just kind of see, see how it goes. And actually what I'm gonna do is actually take the back side of the page that we just used, and I'm actually gonna put it in between this one and that one just to create a little bit of a barrier, just in case this page kind of starts to buckle or you know, just doesn't really react well. Because this paper is so much thinner, it'll kind of bleed through to the other pages. And there's definitely other pages in here that I would like to color. So if I'm gonna ruin a page, it might as well be the other side of this weird pterodactyl jungle space print thing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think this will work. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna just focus on the flamingos first. So I've pulled a couple of those same colors and now I'm just gonna go in with my Derwent and just sort of decide like, where do I want watercolor? And I think I really want it definitely on kind of the head here and the neck. So I'm going to put this down in the areas that I know I kind of want that really pretty soft watercolor look. And I'm gonna sort of avoid some of these areas where it's a little bit more textured, just because I think it'll really stand out a lot more if I kind of focus it on some of these other areas. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not really sure how this is going to come out. This is very much an experiment. And that's the fun thing about coloring, like you don't have to know how it's going to come out because if it doesn't come out, it doesn't matter. You know, I learn a lot more from the things that went, you know, just okay or, or poorly than I do from when the things go really, really well. So it's kind of fun just to experiment and try new mediums and mix mediums. You know, maybe, you know, like like me, I'm, I'm not used to these pencils whatsoever. Um, and I'd like to see if they, you know, kind of need to be all used together with other watercolor pencils or if I've got, you know, a little bit of... Um, flexibility and can use them with other pencils. I'm kind of hoping that's the case, but I will not know until I try. All right, so next I'm gonna pull out that same Prismacolor that I used before. This is a color called Clay Rose, and it's just a very nice, soft, um, kind of tropical pink that I think goes really, really well with our Flamingo. And I'm just gonna sort of focus this on some of the lighter areas where I did not lay down the watercolor. So I didn't use this uh, watercolor pencil on each one of the points of the tail feathers. So I'm just gonna uh, like focus it there and just sort of fill in some of these light spaces that I didn't fill in previously. All right, I'm gonna actually stop at this point and just put this pencil aside for a moment. And I'm gonna go back in with this Jazzberry Jam. This is a Crayola color. And I'm just gonna fill in, again, this is the same color that I used before as sort of our more punchy kind of fuchsia color. And I'm gonna go in and just do a little bit of a test. I don't wanna color the whole thing, you know, test it with the water and then it kind of not do what I was hoping it would. So um, I'd rather test that on kind of a little spot and be able to maybe adapt prior to 
committing fully. All right, let's try just this little back area. Getting my brush wet, wiping it off, and then not only wiping it off, but I'm also really going to dab it off because again, we do not want too much water on our page here. So I'm actually starting from the fuchsia area and going towards the watercolor pencil area wherever I can and kind of just kind of pulling that forward and I think this is working this looks really good I, I don't think I'm using too much water I think I'm okay we'll see what happens when we start to add a little bit more but that that little bit of kind of test area making me happy so let's go back and oh god oh god we got a big droplet <laughs> man ah oh no 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 are you serious can you guys see that not only did it lift the paper, but when I put the paper towel on it, it absolutely just like tore up this little piece of paper here. Oh my gosh, okay. We are going to just pretend like that didn't happen. We might have to do a little bit of surgery on our flamingo. All right, I finished kind of color blocking where I wanted the kind of three pinks that I'm using on our flamingo. So, Let's do another little test spot. So get some water here, wipe it off. And then again, I'm just kind of going from that area where it's not watercolor into the watercolor pencil. The only thing that I'm not loving in some of these areas is that it's really kind of diluting the bright pink watercolor pencil. And I think that was actually kind of my fault because where I pushed nice and hard and like added, you know, plenty of pressure, it's nice and vibrant. So I think in some of these areas, I just didn't kind of put enough saturation down. So I can definitely go back into some of these areas that I want to stay nice and vibrant. Like here, like if you compare that to, you know, some of the areas here, this is a lot more vibrant. So. I think I just need to press a little bit harder. I'm wondering too, like how many layers will it be able to hold, especially with this paper? Because I kind of want to go back in and maybe add just one more layer of this watercolor pink. It's actually called Pink Matter Lake. While I like it not blended, once you blend it, this clay rose just kind of doesn't do anything for it. It's just getting a little bit muddy. So lesson learned again. I think I just maybe want to go one more time kind of over some sections just to kind of add a little bit more of this watercolor pink matter lake back in over some of these areas where it's just a little bit um, like diluted or muddy and see if we can kind of squeeze out some additional vibrancy. All right, let's go back in and see if we can add in an additional layer. I'm gonna try to put quite a lot of pigment here around, around his face. All right, I'm happy with that. And while it didn't go exactly how I was picturing, I do like it. I like that it's kind of varied. There's a lot of you know color differentiation got a lot of personality. And the nice thing is we can kind of take what we learned from doing this one and apply it to this one, but in a different way. So it doesn't have to look exactly the same. Actually, most, you know, flamingos, there's a lot of variation, you know, between two of them. So we can actually do this one very differently and it not stand out, you know, too much as, you know, like a mistake. And hopefully this one won't get a bullet wound. Hopefully. I've been very careful with the water. So I'm going to ditch this dusty kind of clay rose color and let's see if we can come up with something that's a bit more kind of vibrant 
I think this is definitely an option. I also am kind of drawn to these like salmony peachy pinks, but I'm afraid to use them. I think that this might get washed out a little bit too if we add water in it, a water to it. So I'm kind of thinking either this peach or yeah, even this nectar color, I think it might get a little bit muddy. So let's go with this color. This one seems like not a safe choice, but kind of maybe the smart choice based on what we learned from doing this one. All right, now I'm gonna do this one in kind of much the same way. Picking up on the things that I liked from the first go around, but maybe leaving out some of the things that I did not. So I'm definitely gonna be kind of pressing harder just to get you know, all of this beautiful pigmentation down. We ditched the dusty rose. We're not gonna shoot our flamingo. All right, so I've laid down the colored pencil, uh, I'm sorry, the watercolor pencil, and I'm gonna go back in with just this new, this new color, this Prismacolor pink, the one that we kind of swapped. Um, instead of using the dusty rose, we're gonna try this one. And I have a feeling that it's going to be very close to the watercolor color. And it is, but it definitely has a little bit more kind of purpley fuchsia in it. I'm like in the direction. Yeah, this is great. So this one's going to be a lot more vibrant, I think, than this one. And we'll kind of see how they, how they work together. All right, let's try Flamingo 2.0. I finished color blocking the watercolor pink, the regular Prismacolor pink, and our kind of Crayola fuchsia. So let's see what we get when we activate with water. Hmm. Ah! Oh no, I did it again. All right, you know what? We're just gonna let that go. I'm not gonna dab it with this. Let's see what happens. God, now we're shooting at the water. I really like this deep purple that we're getting here. This is very different kind of effect than what we got before, and I am liking it. All right, I don't even think we need another layer on this one. This one is good. I'm also gonna do a check on the back of our paper. It is not wet, it's not buckling. I think we're good, except for right there. All right, so we used our pink and we used it in conjunction with some other non-watercolor pencils. So now I think I wanna use the blue, but I just wanna use it by itself. I just wanna see kind of how it performs watercolor pencil wise, just on its own. So I think I'm gonna use it on the background because then I can do something a little bit different with the water section and I won't have to kind of deal with all these little turning. Well, I mean, I guess I have to deal with them here too. So let's just kind of start to lay some down. And I do want to get some variation, so I'm not just going to lay this down in like one kind of heavy handed swath. I'm going to try to give it like a little bit of variation. And I'm also going to do it in like small sections. I'm just trying to find a way of like, how do I exactly want to start to kind of pull this away from that super saturation. Let's just kind of see what that looks like. That looks nice. Just trying to blend out some of these edges, but obviously we'll come back. And I'm gonna give that a bit of a chance to dry. So I'm gonna hop around a little bit and just kind of see what this gets us. I really like the idea of using this on backgrounds because as you guys know, backgrounds are not my forte. Um, I've been trying to find, you know, something that kind of works for me on different pages and whatnot. And this you could actually kind of use as just like a flat wash of color, but it's not as tedious as like doing just a pencil. Um, you know, you get a little bit more variation just kind of, you know, with how much pressure that you use. So this could be a good uh, kind of background option. Yeah, I really like the kind of soft wash that this really gives it. I thought that this blue was going to be very bright, but when you kind of use that watercolor activation component, um, you, know, you have a lot more uh, kind of ability to just kind of, you know, make it not so bright. 
yeah, I'm getting a lot of nice variation here without it being rough. Like it just looks like, like a nice watercolor wash. And I'm sorry about the lighting guys. I'm still kind of trying to figure out like exactly like how to light the pages in my new studio. Something that I did not foresee. I've got like, like um, recess lighting in the ceiling and it's just sort of adding all of these light sources. So just bear with me and I will eventually try to figure out how to eliminate these shadows. Need some, some soft lighting. All right, the blue ended up working out really well for the background, and it wasn't as difficult to get into all those little nooks and crannies with my brush as it could have been. Always a good idea to have a few different brush sizes just to have the best tool for the job. Now, because of the watercolor effect, this blue ended up being a great sky choice because that variation really mimicked the look of a soft, cloudy day. So next steps were to color the rest of our page. And when in Rome, I decided to take a nod from all those cheesy, touristy coffee mugs that you see in Florida and color our flamingos accordingly. Now you're probably picturing the exact mug that I am right now. You know you are, you know the one I'm talking about. So I took a cue from that color scheme and I really went bold and tropical with our plant life that is perfectly framing our two flamingos here. And I eventually end up switching out to using my Faber-Castell pencils almost exclusively on this page because I recalled and started to use them. They're so buttery on the paper in this particular book that it was an absolute joy to color with them. And for the underwater sandcastle portion, this part ended up being my absolute favorite, not only the color, but also how it came out. Now it's usually this type of kind of tedious coloring, it usually isn't my cup of tea, but this four color palette ended up working out really well. I used two light colors for kind of the main body on the structures, and then two slightly darker colors on the rooftops, and then also just kind of here and there just to kind of drive home some of the deeper shadows on the buildings. Now for the water, I used two different colored teals as I wanted to differentiate it a bit from the sky color. Now here on camera, it looks a little bit similar, but in person, it actually looks a little bit darker, which I liked, but you kind of get the idea. And to really drive this home, I replaced those dark water rings that the artist drew in with my white using gel pens. Now they weren't quite cooperating and they were just kind of being a little bit difficult as I was laying them down. I think I actually need new ones. These exact same, you know, Signo gel pen ballpoint, Uniball, that's what they are, Uniball. <laughs> Uniball Signo gel pens. I really, really like these, but I think I may have kind of soured the, the actual pen tips on these by putting them on top of a surface in a prior video that they really didn't like. They haven't been the same since. I think I just need to toss these and maybe just kind of start fresh. Uh, I also use them to add some signature dots and dashes around the rest of the page too. And in the end, this is what we ended up with. Now, I think this page is so fun and it really does remind me of those cheesy Florida coffee mugs, which I'm feeling very travel sick for right now. And this color palette brings a smile to my face during a harsh Chicago winter day. Overall, I'd say that the Derwent watercolor pencils were really fun to experiment with. Now, I only got two of them, so I don't think that I really gave them, you know, kind of a fair shake, uh, but we did use one all by itself, all on its own, as well as another right alongside our kind of non-watercolor pencils, and I think it worked out really, really well. We got some great vibrancy out of our pink and a great option for backgrounds out of our blue. And I also got to play around with the watercolor pencils. Again, not a medium that I use all the time. So practicing those, it's always a good thing. So if you liked this video, please do me a giant favor. Please hit that like button. It makes the YouTube algorithm very, very happy, which makes me very, very happy as well. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell icon if you wanna get notified of my latest uploads. I also have years and years of coloring videos in my back catalog, so check those out if you're interested. And I will see you all in the next video. Happy coloring.